Mike make your head blow up. Hey yo, it's a talk show host, Kana Lassiter. Join me for an episode of Relations, the most lit lit hour of adult conversation. Hold up, hold up. You know you can't forget about me. It's 51 Spades, Alpha Male G O D. One half of Relations. You wanna hear the truth? Can, can, can you can you can you handle the truth? It's where it's at, baby. It's where it's at, baby. What's good? And welcome to an all new episode of Relations. My name is Kana Lassiter. It's your boy, 51 Spade, Alpha Male, G O D, A K A, the ninja you love to hate. I'm in the building. You already know how this goes. We give you two exciting topics every single Friday night. And tonight we're going to talk about flirting versus being forward. And why is cheating more acceptable than ethical poly? going to be dope conversation tonight. Let's start with, I think the heavier conversation is definitely going to be uh, the cheating versus the ethical policy. So let's just jump into that and then we'll end it on the flirting versus forward. So let me ask the question again so everybody heard it clearly. Why is cheating more acceptable than ethical poly and there's a reason why i use the word ethical because i think i have to i think that there are a lot of um situationships and just things that are kind of thrown together that can be looked at because there are they are thrown together in a sense they're just still reckless so that's why i wanted to put the word ethical there if you have like a guy who has three wives, financially fit, running his home, everybody's healthy and happy, there would be a a big part, especially of the women population, that's like, oh, hell no, wouldn't allow that, would never do that, don't even try me like that, would never participate in that. These are some of the same women who have taken back a cheater over and over again. That's number one. And number two, have probably been cheated on in more than one or or two relationships. So that's why it seems like it's more accepted socially than ethical poly. Cheating is normal. Ethical poly is still a weirdo, disrespectful dude with three wives. That's inappropriate, not acceptable. And he's looked down upon, but his situation is way healthier than your situation taking back a guy who keeps cheating on you over and over again. So when do we begin to break the cycle? So that's where the question actually came from. Mm -hmm. Passing the torch. This isn't a hard one at all. (laughs) (laughs) Of course not. I mean, it's not. It's it's, it's, it's real common sense, isn't Mm -hmm. it? I say this day in and day out. I say this all the time on this show. And everybody should not even have to take a wild guess on what I'm about to say. Not even a wild guess. It starts with women and it ends with women. Women are delusional. They just (laughs) delusional. They just like it the hard way. I've never met a woman that like it easy. Women won't shit hard. Like even when you sit down with with some women and you ask them about shit, it's always an excuse. It's never they fault. <laughs> they can't even accept the faults, even if it was right in front of their face. You took this guy back because he was beating your ass. Why? <clears throat> <clears throat> but I loved him. I was fucked up about him. Like, love ain't enough. You know what I'm saying? For someone to be mentally abusing you, um, physically abusing you, or any any of the sorts. Well, does that sound like a sane person to you? I would say no. <clears throat> if you... Broadening the, the 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 perspective of this with society is all. For some reason, women have been told that they enough, and they believe that shit. Like they believe that one of them can achieve everything. But isn't that a nice thought? And I want you to, before you answer that, <clears throat> is what a nice thought? That you are enough. I don't think of it in broken da- in a broken down message to uh, about relationships or about jobs. Just a message in a whole mm. to be able to say to your daughter or to a loved one, you're enough. 
Mm-hmm. And to be able to teach that and send them out in the world like they're enough, mm-hmm. how can you make that a negative? And there might be a very good answer for this, but mm-hmm. I want people to really listen to what you're going to say because I have a great answer for it. Mm-hmm. But to teach the message mm-hmm. that, hey, man, sending your kids out in the world like they're enough is a mistake. Mm-hmm. There needs to be a good explanation for that. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you want to send them out there like we tell people <clears throat> that the Easter Bunny is real? We tell them that Santa Claus is real. It's like people love lies. Like that's just <laughs> <laughs> that's just the reality of it. Like what you mean? There's a fit. There's a there's a like nobody want to hear the truth. Like I understand that. I understand motivational speaking. I understand, like, uh, especially with women nowadays, they'll be like, uh, what, what, what's the shit, uh, they be, uh, be Simone say, or whatever her name is, uh, manifest. Yes. They'll be like, manifest this shit into existence. That's cool. There are levels to this shit. It's all, <laughs> it, it, and, and the thing about it is it's crazy that men know what our limits are. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then but women don't know what their limits are because they've been told that they can have everything. You know, mm-hmm. they've been told this big lie and they and they they ride with that shit. Like they honestly feel like I'm enough for this man and I can complete every duty task and everything like that. But that is just simply not true. And it's a hard thing to hear as it is to even ponder that if you're someone who's already in established relationship. Mm-hmm. And you're hearing that you're not enough. Mm. That is not the way to it. It that it doesn't work. What I'm saying is, I think the problem I get it. and the answer to this question is mm. the communication is just wrong mm. because there's no way you could tell another grown woman who has her own situation who doesn't believe mm. in any poly situation. She just has been sent mm. out to world to believe in tradition and in her worth. She's she's not going to accept that well. I believe so. That. I feel like there's got to be a way to convey the but, message <clears throat> in a better, more constructive, and more understandable way, so we can understand without I being get, offended. I get that, and I understand that. But see, this is where your topic come into play, and this is where you're gonna have a breakdown of your shit going left. The reality of it is, every woman that's with a man, and then when they look at a a man with Three, three women, two wives, three wives, whatever the case may be, they'll look over there and be like, that shit look ridiculous. Like, why does he need three women and blah, 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 this, 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 and that. And then they'll look at they mate and be like, don't you even think, think about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that process might already be in play. The difference is you might be in a poly situation. You just don't know the other person. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because the other person that he got in another state, down the street, up the block, down in downtown, like y'all already in a poly situation. And when you find out that situation, you're the same person that accept the shit. You might not accept the other female, but you take him back. And what you think? He just go cold turkey and just cut this woman off and be like, well, my wife found out about you and we just can't continue to go on. Like... This is why y'all in counseling now, because she over there saying, well, you can't keep his dick in his pants, and I don't understand what's wrong with him. But you the the same person that said you are enough. Like, that's just the thing. Like, my thing is not for, it's not for every woman. It's like, do you know your mate? That's the real question. Do you know your mate? And if you know your mate is, is, is high sexually strung, I'm trying to figure out how you thinking you can just take care of them. I don't know no woman swinging from no chandeliers. I don't know no woman shooting gold out they pussy. I don't know women like that. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I know women may think that, but I ain't met one. For every man that you line up, you ask him what's better than that pussy, it's going to be new pussy. Every time. I feel you. <laughs> and so I will say this that was a better way to communicate it gotcha. so I think if we're having the conversation it just has to come from a more constructive place now me as a woman Very hard to come from a constructive place Mm -hmm. because I'm another woman to another woman. Mm -hmm. And for for it to come from a man, 
it just I feel like it's better deliverable deliverable. But I also think to have a woman to kind of stamp it mm-hmm. makes sense. But a woman can't stamp that. Reason being is because when we on, let's just say for instance, like if you look at the world as a whole, mm-hmm. all the sexuality that's being sold to us. Mm-hmm. We got OnlyFans, we got porn, mm-hmm. um, we got just women just doing sexual things um, to enhance their body, look a certain way, look sexy. All, all this shit is being sold sex. But I'm trying to figure out, like, y'all selling all this sex, but then telling man, like, you can look at it, but you better not touch. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's where shit gets a little foggy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because every day, your man is out in this world. Right. Every day is temptation out in this world. I'm not telling you that you have to accept that shit. You don't. But there's a lot of things in this world that we ain't got to accept. I'm a man. Correct? Mm-hmm. I'm a black man. Mm-hmm. Right? It's a white man's world. I know this. So, I don't go in this world talking about, well, that shit ain't fair, man. Why this white dude got this job over me and this and that, and I'm more qualified. This. Like, men know how to accept shit for, like, what it is. And we make it what we have to do just to get the shit done. Women don't go by that. That's why I said, that's why I use that word delusional. Women want to be told that they queens and princesses and all this type of shit. I'm not saying that you don't deserve to be called that shit. But if it's, it's a whole bunch of queens out here and a whole bunch of princesses, like, like every one of y'all, like, <laughs> there's no handmaidens out here. <laughs> like, it's no regular chicks out here. We all queens and princesses, Somebody and we deserve pray. the world. <laughs> y'all got to pray for spade. <laughs> yes, like, well, we got to get it. Like, we got to pull, we got to dial some of this shit back now. <laughs> Like I understand, I get it. It's it's a, it's it's a term Jesus. of it, it's a term of endearment, and don't get this and don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? Like I have a daughter, and I tell my daughter the same shit, but I also tell her the bullshit that come with it. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's the difference. Yeah, like you can be told that you can be whatever you want to be, but there got to be some limits on this shit. I don't tell my daughter that you can have every man in the world and everybody need to be at your feet. Mm-hmm. I warn her about men that's going to be wanting shit from her, that's going to deceive her, that's going to tell her that they love her when they really don't. To recognize what love is versus sex and someone trying to get her just for sex versus being married, you know. So you don't give, you give her the real versus what most of us got now because I have never had a conversation with my mom that was really like, Real other than, okay, you should never let a man put his hands on you. I got that. But I think everybody has that basic lesson. Probably or not. you should, when you sit down, you should keep your legs closed and you, you're you more than sex. So And you're beautiful. I did get those things from my mom. Mm-hmm. But I didn't get, like, the real raw. So you, you give her the raw. I still had a little bit of the raw, but most of my upbringing, I will say, was white picket fence get married you know those that's the example that i had so um for me i respect what you're saying that you send her out like that but i also want to say that now in my age a lot of people tell me wow candy you have such a light you still have hope and i think that's because the way i was brought up having that picket fence, ambition, and picture painted. That's where the light comes from. So I'm asking you about just being, just raising somebody that's jaded Mm -hmm. and believing that Mm -hmm. there isn't going to be a guy who really does love Mm -hmm. her because that guy doesn't exist because they all just want something. Mm -hmm. And you could build, you're doing the right thing, but aren't you afraid that you're also building someone who could come off a little Old? Mm. Teaching somebody realistic goals and also, you know, don't get it twisted. I'm not telling her that there's nobody out here for her and for that purpose. I'm telling her what to watch out for. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but with I, your beliefs, if she came to you and she said, Dad, I'm in a relationship with this guy, and then they're <clears> monogamous, <throat> <throat> would you have this conversation about, well, okay, daughter, I know you got a boyfriend now, but I want you to know that there's probably other women, mm -hmm. and you probably need to accept that over life, mm -hmm. that a man is never going to just want you. Mm -hmm. Tackle that. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's different things in... It's different things in different characters for different individuals. I would never sit down and say that every man can't live with like one, one piece with, with one piece of pussy. Right. Okay. Like I'm not saying that that don't. But now, like anything else in life, we're talking about statistics. Okay. Fair enough. So statistics tell you that there's going to be a high <laughs> volume of some infidelity going yeah. on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not saying there ain't no man that's just like, well, I love my wife and I wouldn't cheat on my wife. I visited. I, you know, but there's different forms of cheating. You understand what I'm saying? Like cheating isn't always it's just sex. fucking physical. It's not just sex. You understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes, yes. Like, people have emotional affairs sometimes, and they get connected to people because now the world is an open field. Before, you know, you went out, and you had to talk to people, and you on your job and shit like that. Now, people got whole access to shit. Like, you see somebody that's in, in South Carolina, California, this and that. It's social media, and... People can just jump in your inbox. People I don't know. And the difference between, like, women and men is, like, women always curious about something. It's like, someone sent me, like, a DM. Let me see who this is. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, if you don't know the motherfucker, why are you curious about why someone sending it's you a, a message? Yeah. But women just can't help themselves. Yeah. You understand? Like, someone say, you look nice and pretty. It's a response that kind of come with that. You understand what I'm saying? It's the same person doing the same shit. And before you know it, y'all having small conversations. And you're going to say what every woman say. But I'm not cheating. Yeah, but that is. But would you tell your man and risk life for limb to say that you're talking to this guy? Because if you ain't willing to do that, then you cheating. You, you cheating. If, you, if he don't know about it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, don't, don't tell me about shit that, you know, that you're not doing. Like, just because you ain't throwing my catches, mitt. That don't mean <laughs> that it ain't what it is. Yeah. Like, and, you're talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That ain't your man. Mm -hmm. If you tell your man, you'll get the real response. You'll tell your homegirl before you tell your man. Well, it is this guy that I'm talking to, but it's nothing, this and that. But you won't tell your man that. Yeah, well, that definitely qualifies as cheating. You know, it does make me kind of sad, actually. Because... Most of my friends aren't as open as I am. Mm -hmm. So I have to have a lot of conversations from the monogamous mm -hmm. viewpoint. And in my heart, I feel like this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like, not that the relationship is bullshit, but for her, I wish she were in a more clear place like I am. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, okay, it's almost like sending your kid off on the bike without training wheels, mm -hmm. knowing they're they're going to fall. Like, you're, they're going to come home with scraped knees. Mm -hmm. So you kind of know, talking to your friend, that something's going to go down. You don't know what. Mm -hmm. Like you said, everything isn't sexual. But I don't believe that there are two people on the planet that are just for each other entirely. Mm -hmm. Like emotionally, physically, mm -hmm. uh, when you need to be spiritually fed. I, I cannot go to my spouse if I need to be spiritually fed. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go to him for scripture, okay? Mm -hmm. I need to get that from somewhere. Now, I should not be going to get it from another man, but mm -hmm. that's just an example that your spouse is not your everything. Mm -hmm. They are not. Mm -hmm. So because they're not your everything, they have to pull from other sources. I think that that has to be a clear understanding. I think that if we compartmentalize some of those things, we can kind of understand what the benefit of ethical poly really is. Mm -hmm. The guy with three financially fit wives, plus he's financially fit, mm -hmm. has a household ran with three women in it. And like you said, we're queens, right? Supposedly. We're running the kingdom. Supposedly. This man has little stress because all the bills can get paid. How many of us 
can say we've woken up in the last five years and not thought about what needed to get paid and how it was going to get paid. Mm -hmm. That is an amount of stress on a person. We have no clue what it's doing because it's happening on the inside of your body, mm -hmm. but it's doing damage. And it definitely happened to me. Yes. It's doing damage. How many times has a man in this room had to sneak off and do something, whether it was just have a conversation, whether it was just to send a message, go talk to his baby mama. He got to actually duck off. Think about the stress that it does on his psyche. Whether he can feel it or not, it's doing damage to the inside of his body because he wants to do something that now he has to sneak out of his own home where he pays bills to go do. If that can't stress a motherfucker out, can't nothing. Because this is your kingdom. Your home is where you sleep, eat, shit, fuck, take care of your kids. If there's something that you want to go do by nature, mm -hmm. you should not be able to have to leave your home to go do it. And I will break that down to a conversation I had. I won't say the people's name, but this particular person had a problem with her husband keeping beer in the fridge. Motherfucker can't keep beer in the fridge right away. He pay bills at? Because she was more religious mm -hmm. and she just felt like it was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. So now what you're doing is you're forcing him now to go keep his beer somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm going to say that. Mm -hmm. He is going to be in somebody. Search is going to start out at the bar because he can't take it home. So mm -hmm. I'll just stop by the bar before I go home. Mm -hmm. So now instead of coming home straight for dinner, he got to stop and have a drink. Mm -hmm. And then he meets somebody at the bar that don't mind him keeping his beer in her refrigerator. So not only does he get to save money because he ain't buying the beer at the bar no more, mm -hmm. he got company. And that's your fault. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I think maybe making examples away from sex would help you understand the sexual part of it. Because really, ethical poly, sex is what? It's a big part of it, but it's not all of it. Mm -hmm. The bills still need to get paid. The house is still clean. Correct. The kids are still tutored. All of the above. Mm -hmm. And what it really boils down to is jealousy. When, when, when there's no way that you, if you was the line man up and say, "Hey, would you take on two wives if you was in a financial place and you could take care of two wives or three wives, this and that," it was it would only be women who have a complaint about it because. <laughs> They dealing with jealousy at the end of the day. They want to be, like I said, number one in everything, even though they might be lacking in certain spots. Another thing, which I'm glad that you actually did bring up that beer scenario is throughout time, things change. Just like there was there was a long time ago. I couldn't use the bathroom. <laughs> in, in, in uh, uh, somewhere because it was white only. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And colors went here and white people went there. And throughout time, things change. Another thing that has changed is that role reversal is a big, big ass thing. Now, there was there has never been a time my grandma would talk to my granddad and be like, you can't keep beer in there. But now because of certain laws have come into play, women stick their chest out a little bit more like they men and saying what you can't do. Mm -hmm. You can't go there you can. when you coming back. Um, you know, it's like, who is the man here and who is the woman? Like, it's like we, we the, the roles have got to the point where women now even uh, mentally abuse men. And that's what get the fucking physical shit out of the men is because they're, they're, they're taking them to this spot where that's where the other woman comes into play. Like, they don't got peace of mind at home because he can't keep beer there. He can't smoke in there. Now you're trying to say I'm too drunk in my own goddamn house and all this other shit. Damn the shit that's going on with me taking care of the house. I ain't no bum. I'm working. I'm doing all this type of shit. Like, I can't have a fucking cigarette or weed or looking in my own house. Whatever your vice is. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Then that means that Tanisha down the street let me keep all the bill that I want. Give me all the head that I need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I don't want to be in the house with you. I love you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, but I'm not looking for a mama. But let's let's talk about what the beer actually symbolizes. The beer symbolizes what he's getting that he's not getting from his wife. So I want to go back a to that. mouth? No. I want to go back to you are not everything. You can't give him what that cold beer gives him after a hard day of work. Get over it. You are not his 
everything. It is not possible. Okay. So why do the women beer think that gives though? him what he needs? So that's so. But why do you think women feel they are everything to their man? I think that this is all like a part of the bigger epigenetics conversation. I just think that we were beaten down so badly going back years to being slaves. And I know we're talking about women in general. Mm -hmm. I'm a black woman, so I'm going to relate it to epigenetics. I think being down that low to where you're under someone's foot, I think we've adapted telling each other how beautiful we are and how much we deserve and how how much we can do and that we can be everything. I think that it has been such a low extreme that now we're like way up here. And I think it's okay to be here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of one of the things you need for the key of life mm -hmm. is to be okay with, you don't want to be down there, but up there ain't is probably an unrealistic goal. Mm -hmm. And because of the world we live in, it's kind of okay to kind of, Come halfway a little bit. Hmm. That's called submission. Femininity. Some shit that some men need that some women ain't giving. Actually, a lot of motherfucking women ain't giving that shit. Like, I, I don't need to, and I hate to say it that way, but it's the only way to be said. I don't want to be with nobody that sound like my fucking mama. I ain't dating my mama. I ain't with nobody that want to be my mama. And I ain't nobody finna tell me what to do. As a man, man, that's how every man gonna feel. And, like, that's a little shocking to me. Because if I buy beer, it's going in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that <laughs> like at the, I'm glad that like, you're focusing like, on that. Like, because like, like at the end of the day, I'm telling you, like I'm gonna just say this when you know, and this is for me, you know, nobody, nobody else, I'm only talking about me. When someone tell me what I ain't gonna do. We're going to have some problems because you can almost guarantee that I'm going to do what I want to do. And sometimes if you tell me what I ain't going to do, I'm going to do it despite what the fuck you said. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. But I'm almost positive that if you're dealing with a man that's like me, that's why y'all end up in majority of y'all fights. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like my beer ain't fucking with you. It's in the refrigerator, it's gonna be in my belly. He is not letting that shit go. <laughs> well, I'm because it I want a primary but, example because I want to keep it off of sex. Exactly. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Glad I, I'm only saying that because I want to keep it off sex. Like, cause some a lot of times women take this. That's no, why the conversation go this, left. Yeah, they they take this notion of they think that when you with the other woman, that's why them them, them those questions come up. Well, what was she doing that, that I wasn't that, that I wasn't doing? Well, you want to run down the list? I couldn't have beer in the house, you know, and it'd be minor to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, like any time a man bring up some shit that he won't, it's minor to the woman. It's almost like you'll say it and it go in, in one ear and, and right out the other. Like, it's like you just have a problem with it, mm -hmm. like for, for some reason. Because it doesn't mean much. It doesn't mean much because in the person's mind. That ain't no big deal. We could still go do this together because that's what gives her joy. The thing is, it's not about you. It is not about you. I don't think a man's desires have to do with me, except for when he's desiring me. Unless I planted the seed. I mean, I know how to kind of say something to get him turned on or plant a seed, but that's the only time his own desires have to ever do with me. He has his own desires that don't concern me. And I think if you can say that out loud, then you're going to come to the realization that if he has desires that don't have anything to do with me, when is he taking advantage of these desires? Ask yourself that because you aren't with him 24 hours a day at all. There's no way that you can be. And if let's say that I, I like coffee, my old man, hates the smell of coffee. It gives him a migraine. He can't stand it. I have not walked into this relationship in my mind and never having another cup of coffee. I have just worked out where I leave the house on my way to the store. I will stop at Dunkin' Donuts and buy my fucking coffee. And then I will have a Listerine strip before I go in the house and no one knows that I had coffee while I was gone. That's not true, but gotcha. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
But anyway, <laughs> I found a way to get what it is that I needed for my man to think, well, I don't like the smell of coffee. It gives me a headache and you don't need coffee anyway. Uh, find something else. That's easy for you to say because you don't drink coffee. So I don't give coffee up. I just found a way to go have it. I hate to be simple and communicate it like that to y'all, but I think I have to. These are the little things that are no different than him thinking about another piece of pussy or him wanting to have an intellectual conversation with a nurse that he met because your ass works at Wendy's and he had a conversation on accident with a nurse and he wants to have that conversation with her again. You know what? Because that nurse gave him a conversation that your ass can't. Simple and plain. You are not everything. And just to give these clues and statements in, you know what I'm saying, while the jury is listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to bet that, and, and, and I'm glad you said it, and this is not to pick on you, so I don't want you to take it this way. But I'm quite sure that the coffee has affected your relationship. So to give, to not give up the coffee, because and the reason I'm saying this is not, like I said, not to pick on you, it's, just, it's for women out there that be like, see, you don't got to... You don't got to give up everything. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do what your man say. But see, coffee seep through pores. You know what I'm saying? Just like onions, they be all. And I'm quite sure. Oh, I'm so done right now, <laughs> that y'all. That lack of kissing has came into play because of coffee. Because you won't give it up. And sometimes that's just what it is. See, that's what I be telling you about women. You know what I'm saying? Your women, your man don't like coffee, but God damn it, you don't want to give it up. But you want this man to give up all this pussy out here. You see how this shit is? This shit is crazy. I am done with you. Anyway, I was making an example, and I think the example is pretty good. I know, no, no. Is, I, I, you understand I, what I'm saying? But I, I agree with you. But yeah. that's that's the reason why I was saying that yeah. because you, you're gonna have a lot of women that's like. I'm not going to share my man or I'm not going to do that, this and that. But in, in most reality, you're sharing your man already. And I hear my friend saying, because I'm enough. And she, she said it like over and over Anybody again. That I'm told- a fucking enough, man. I'm enough. And I'm like, well, how do you know that you're enough for a whole other person? How do you know that? Because they've been told that lie. <laughs> that Santa Claus is real. And the Easter Bunny <laughs> is too. I'm telling you, like, because every time I talk to a woman, especially women who be saying, like, well, why does he need somebody else? See, the thing is this. Women don't have the type of desires that men have. Mm -hmm. So that's number one, how you would not know. Mm -hmm. I often hear women saying shit like, you know, like, well, I should be enough. I fuck them, I suck them, I do all this type of shit. Mm -hmm. But see, the difference is, is like, you ever see these motherfuckers that be having, like, wow animals and shit that they raised from cubs and shit and the motherfucker just turn on them and shit. See, he was still a lion or a tiger. I don't give a fuck how cutting, cute and cuddly his ass was. But at some point in time, the nigga one day just wake him and Back like, to his nature. I feel like stabbing me a motherfucker today. Putting your motherfucking mouth in my... Uh, uh, putting your head in my mouth. And ain't nothing you can do. The tiger just, just turn on your motherfucking ass and you sitting there thinking that... Well, shit, I had him since he was a cub. What yeah. the fuck does that mean? Nature is nature. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker's still a wild animal. And that's the thing about men that women just don't understand. Yeah. A lot of the lot of sex that men have is just sex. It's for conquer. It's for conquest. It's a lot of that Punching. shit. It don't have anything to do with, I want this girl. Or I want this lady. I want to be with her anything. Like, some of that shit is just a conquer. If, a, if you ever, you want to test the theory... Just give your man a free pass and watch what he do with the pass. And I bet you she won't last past three fucks. Because once that desire is done, it's done. It's done. Like, women always say that same shit. It's like, every time we have sex and then that nut shoot out of you, you don't want me to touch you or hug you. Because that's just... It's over. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be touched. I don't want to cuddle. I don't want to talk. I don't want to do all none of that <laughs> Fucking hard out of my <laughs> moment it's over with yeah. So, um yeah i get it i get it it's just i think this is probably one of those topics that we will definitely re- revisit but one of those topics that i will share if someone asks me personally my opinion on ethical poly mm-hmm. i'm talking about a good 
financially, financially fit, mentally and emotionally happy situation mm -hmm. with more than just two people. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about no foolishness. I think this might be one of the shows to refer them back to until we do it again. So we're going to go into the next subject of the night, which is flirting versus being forward. So it's actually the same topic. It's just now verbaliz verbalizing what you want, mm -hmm. being a real person. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because I have a friend mm -hmm. who is putting myself herself out there. Mm -hmm. And she's going on dating apps mm -hmm. and she's, you know, mingling, trying to bring somebody into the fold. And she told me that she's at the thin line of where she feels like flirting doesn't work anymore. She kind of just wants to say, I just want to eat the pussy and what's up? That's what she wants to convey to the to the girl that she's trying to, the, to the women that she's talking to. She just wants to say it flat out mm -hmm. because she feels like she's putting in so much time on the flirt level. Mm -hmm. She doesn't feel like it's respected. The, hey, you want to go out to dinner? Or, hey, you want to go hang out on the beach? Or, hey, all these oh hey's aren't being really met with anything. So she feels like to evoke some type of emotion, she needs to just be real with her and be like, hey, I want to eat the box. Mm -hmm. And just to, just to get something back, that's either oh or something back from the person. So that's where the question actually came from. Flirting ver versus being forward today, because it is 2021. So I'm, I'm actually gonna say, if it were me, I would probably lean towards the more forward even though I wouldn't say, hey, I want to eat the box. I would mm -hmm. probably say something else, but I would be more forward than flirty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shit is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is 2021, man. I'm right. trying to figure out the motherfucking problem. But I'll entertain this. Anyway. <laughs> this needs to be entertained. Um, the, 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 if you really want to know the real problem, the real problem is this. What it sounds like is it sounds like she's new to this in the pursuit of happiness. And, <laughs> and when you're new to this, I'm going to just say this. When you are a feminine woman, which it sounds like she is, that's the reason she has a problem with saying, hey, I want to eat the pussy. Hey, I want to, you know, do some do some things to you. But... She haven't gripped. She hasn't gripped the reality of this is what butchers do. You understand? Butchers are like men, and they approach it from a man's standpoint. I was out one night with my girl, and real strong butch type <laughs> approached us, <laughs> and told my lady it was like, if he don't know what to do with you, then he need then you need to come over here. Oof. But see, that's something that a man would do. Think about when men approach you and they just disrespectful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Straight up. I'm, I'm, I'm not even I'm not even bullshitting. Yeah. Like, think of some of the pickup lines that men then shot to you and then you understand perfectly why she having a problem. She's trying to approach it like we in the 20s and the 30s and, she, and 30. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that shit ain't working nowadays. I just got finished saying we have all access right now. To everything, like the world is our oyster. That's a thin like, line. It's also the Me Too movement, and you can say the wrong thing to the wrong person. Gotcha. How many women you seen getting sued for attacking another woman? I ain't seen many, but I ain't seen a lot. I seen a lot of men saying some inappropriate shit and got in trouble, but I ain't never seen no woman yeah. saying some shit to well, another woman. Well, it's not limited to, exactly. this is just an example. Well, um, well, but if you were, if you met someone who was like me, more conservative, more of a lady, mm. I don't think you would be like, you know what? I'm just going to tell her I want to fuck her. I don't mm. think that. And then if you did, I would want to check myself like, what did I do to make him think that was okay? But somebody said to you they want to fuck you. Who is the question? I ain't saying that you didn't. I ain't saying you fucked them. But someone said to you either they took you out, wanted to take you home, and they said to you, well, I was thinking we was going to go to your house and fuck. 
Someone has said to you at some point in time, either you're not a real lady, but some man has did some disrespectful shit where you had to be I'll like. I'll say that, yeah. But I still, at the end, have that still wasn't like, okay. I, I understand that. But I'm answering your question. That question you was about to ask was, what have I done? Nothing. <laughs> you ain't done shit to make no man say to you, like, I thought we could go to your house and Netflix and chill, ma. I thought we could go to your house and just, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's someone that they said that shit. You didn't warrant any of that shit. You know? Because it's the same shit that, to give you an example, it's like, it's the same shit. Like, let's say, for instance, like I'm on Instagram. Okay? I'm going to scroll through certain certain women. And I'm going to see certain women. I'm going to be like, you know what? I might send her, uh, hey, how you doing? Or, you know, just just some simple shit. And then it's going to be another one I look like, and I'm going to say, how much? Now, I might be dead ass wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I might be. I might be wrong. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm only, I, I'm only working with what she gave me. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Like every picture that I see. If I see a bunch of thongs and titties out and like I went to, I went to sleep lonely last night. Uh, I wish I could put something in my mouth. You see all these memes and these shit that girls be typing and shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Hey, like, how else am I supposed to approach this? I right. can't approach it from no gentleman's standpoint. Right. Because it's going to be a man that just enter that shit disrespectful and get the pussy. And you're going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like... But the next, and it and and that's why men are like that. They yeah. some they just don't beat around the bush. They it's just so be like weird. they just be like, What's up, mom? What you need? Two, yeah. three grand? Like what's happening? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like sometimes you can't approach it from a gentleman's standpoint because you're not gonna get anywhere with it. What is what's that called? It's shock value. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's putting that shock in the in, in the in the woman's mind and then have her actually thinking about doing it yeah because the other shit ain't working all that good morning hi how are you doing y'all look at that shit and be like yeah that's the lame guy that's not thank you not getting it but the motherfucker that's getting the pussy then wrote y'all the most disrespectful shit and y'all gave that shit a shot and i think that's where she is with it like at least the shock value will let you know where the person stands and you could just okay they ain't with it and just move on um, it's still one of those things that I feel like is hard to hear and talk about depending on how you carry yourself. I'm a realist of, I'm like super dope, but I need to have a certain amount of respect. Oh, but that's you. I need to be approached a certain way. And I, I don't think, even though I'm as real as they get, I don't think I would be okay with a man just saying, I, I just want to fuck. Mm -hmm. but you know, I want him to flirt with me. I want him to take me out to dinner. I want him to tell me I'm pretty. Mm -hmm. I want him to do all the things I feel like I'm worth. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm a realist and I know you want to fuck, I don't mm -hmm. think that needs to be said. Mm -hmm. I think you just need to do all the other things to let me know you want to. Mm -hmm. All the nice little things. Gotcha. Now I'm finna show y'all some shit real quick. See, I like shit like this when I hear shit like this. So I love it. So I want y'all to check this shit out. See all that shit that you just did? You mm -hmm. was like, I want the guy to give me that type of respect and give me all that type of shit. And you want to know, like, why some of this shit ain't going down the way that you saying that? Why way more disres disrespectful shit is going on? Is because the guys that give you that type of shit, the gentleman shit, the high, that res that that show you that re type of respect, y'all shit on them. Would you say, what did the married man do that you fucked? Did he do all that shit? Did, he hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did he take you out? Did we he... couldn't go out. That doesn't hold count. Hold on, hold on. I let you talk. He did other stuff. Got you. I know what other shit he did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know what other shit he did. But what I'm a, what I'm gonna show you is. He ain't do half the shit that you asking a man to fucking do right now with all that shivery shit. See, by him being married, he was already disrespectful. He's already a sneaky motherfucker that snuck out, that lied to his wife to get to your ass. You didn't give a fuck about none of that shit. So he went 
all commando style. You know what I'm saying? Rambo. You know what I'm saying? And then y'all doing the nasty. He ain't do half of that shit that you asking a man to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show y'all something about this shit since you saying like you don't get that shit. And men that's real good, that are qualified for what you asking for, we see that shit. We see other men and like, that damn. Don't deserve. Thank you. We see other men that sit there that don't deserve the pussy. But y'all gave y'all let him be a trampoline on your motherfucking ass and do all that shit. This nigga ain't take your ass nowhere. Nigga married and all this other type shit. You know what I'm saying? Sneaky got two, three, four, five women and shit. You probably one of the lineups. But you ain't question him the same way you question that. Regardless of how you thinking about that shit, you didn't do it. I know what you want, but I want you to say, make that make sense to a man on the outskirts looking at that because plenty of men see that because mm -hmm. it happens a lot. It'd be a plenty of men that looking at that looking at other dudes and be like, God damn, this nigga ain't roll out no red carpet and no shit. He mm -hmm. being real disrespectful and she hanging on, sucking dick, doing all this other type shit with no problem. No problem. You know what? I have to say that you have to acknowledge when a person grows up. You can't hold a person responsible <laughs> for bad choices in the past. That's what we going to grow with. <laughs> yeah, we have to. Because you have to acknowledge, especially women. I, I swear to God, bro. Like, I, for me, I have grown a whole lot over time. Gotcha. I can say that. You know what I'm saying? Being really real. So I could understand a woman that you saw that looking in. Key word is saw. Mm -hmm. What do you see? And that's how you should approach her. Mm -hmm. Because all women go through a promiscuous stage mm -hmm. then they get a boyfriend for mm -hmm. a long time they get their heart broken they're mm -hmm. back in the promiscuous stage mm -hmm. then they're in the home girl stage women grow up so yeah you might be pointing out the 28 year old mm -hmm. between the ages of 28 and 33 mm -hmm. but you might not be talking about 33 to 43 because that ain't the ones that i want you know what i'm saying <laughs> and there's gonna be plenty i got answers for that shit too I'm, them ain't what is the, wrong with you? Them ain't the ones that we Something want. Something is really wrong. There ain't nothing wrong with me. Them ain't the ones oh that we my want. God, I, I'm just, I'm just being real because this is the other thing that's gonna pop up. So when they show older men, let's take Michael Jordan for example, and all these motherfuckers be like, he with that young thing, and this is hate. That's just motherfucking, just straight up hate. Men, high value men that have a lot of out of control money don't want nobody over thirty three and up that got all this baggage and shit. Now if you ain't now if you ain't got that, that's cool. But if you want to put perspective on this shit, name a, a name a bunch of women that's like thirty three and up that ain't got a bunch of problems, ain't got a bunch of kids, ain't got a bunch of two baby daddies, ain't got a bunch of this shit going on. Like if you want to get real, people out there laughing and shit thinking that I'm tripping. I'm not tripping. <laughs> You put a man right there with that scenario and say, damn, you doing well in life. Why don't you pick up this woman that's 33 with three kids and got two baby daddies and all this other shit going on in counseling. You know what I'm saying? Talking to a therapist and shit like that. If you write that shit down on paper, that shit don't look right. I said that shit to my mama. My mama said, run for the border. Come on, man. Like, we don't want that. Because... At a younger age, Straight you can you can at least mold them. They ain't coming in with all that baggage. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not saying this to be funny. I'm I'm being real. Mm -hmm. Like when you dealing with an older woman, it's a lot of shit that's coming with that, and it takes a certain man to it, it takes a certain man to deal with a lot of that shit because you're asking that man to deal with a lot of that shit. I think that you you have a very good point. And I do agree with a lot of what you said. But I'm going to play devil's advocate. Play it. I have to. I think one of the key words I'm going to focus on that you said is the word mold. Mm -hmm. I'm going to graduate weight that word I said up you can. to. You can mold them. Mm -hmm. But I'm also going to go ahead and curve that word over to being able to manipulate. Mm -hmm. There's a meme mm -hmm. here that says when the little girl is healed, the woman will show up. Mm -hmm. And a woman is just not going to accept mm. or be able to uh, to deal with a lot of disrespect based on her growth. That's what I'm saying. 
I can say that I've grown a lot of shit that I accepted when I graduated in high school. Of course, I wouldn't accept now. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't expect for a guy to approach me mm -hmm. like, oh, you was the same bitch that used to date so and so back. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I, what's up? Mm -hmm. I don't expect you to talk to me like that, bitch. Mm -hmm. I ain't in 12th grade. Mm -hmm. So I'm not blame. Don't blame that on me having baggage. Mm -hmm. Blame that on me being a woman and mm -hmm. demanding some type of respect when you're speaking to me. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That don't have shit to do with baggage on my end. Mm -hmm. That just happens to me going back to what you said. We're queens and princesses, right? right. There's nothing wrong. I said you've been told that. And, that, and I think that's why that's important. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not told that, then you're going to accept shit that you definitely mm -hmm. should not. Mm -hmm. And someone that can't verbally communicate in a respectful way, you don't deserve that. No matter what you got going on. Gotcha. Remember earlier when you said to me, you have a daughter. Would you want her to grow up being jaded in the world by you telling her certain things that men want in this world or some of the deception that men is going to do? Mm -hmm. See, that's called being raised right so she don't make some of these dumbass choices that you do when you are young and dumb. Mm -hmm. Women, I get tired of women using this shit about like I was young and you and, and, and letting that shit fly like it's, like it's a fucking excuse. Like making a mistake is like crashing a car. That's a mistake. Understand what I'm saying? You at 33 don't make you no woman in front of my face because you got two baby daddies. That's still a goddamn choice that you made, a mistake that you made that you're going to be accountable for. I'm sorry. Like, you can sit there and say, well, we've grown up. No, you're running out of time is what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know what the hell it is. Like, we going to be real or we going to be fake with this shit. Like, no, we not. We're not going to use that because you decided that. At this time that you're growing up and now you finna uh, you finna subject another man to the fucking choices you made in your life. I understand everybody make mistakes. I made mistakes. Men make mistakes too. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But guess what? When is a men and women deal with two different things, especially when mistakes when they when when they growing up, mm -hmm. okay? Women, I've already addressed one of those things. One of those things is children. When they decide not to get married, but they laying down with a motherfucker. And then you be like, well, why you ain't marry him? Well, he wasn't good enough for me, but he was good enough to fuck. And, he and was good, good enough and, to have a baby from him. Yeah, and he was good enough to slap you around. And he was good enough to keep you, you know, down, mentally down and all this type of shit. And when I flip it around, the other thing is for young men, especially young black men. When we get locked up and out here doing, running the streets and shit like some catch felonies and some don't. And the ones that don't catch felonies get good jobs and the ones that catch felonies don't. So I got to live with that mistake that I fucking made. And I can sit there and tell every job, you know, I'm, I'm a grown up now. And they're going to say to me in the real world, I understand that. But in 1986, you was breaking in houses. Yeah, that's it. That's how it works. You did it. So what, what I'm, I'm supposed to go with your theory? This is the theory of what I was talking about by women <laughs> being told that they princesses and queens and all this type of shit. There is the real world and there is fantasy land. There you go. Bizarro world. Well, I'm going to leave Bizarro world <laughs> and go into the world of our tap ins. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah. Both of those topics could definitely be re revisited. I'm going to get into yes. the tap in of uh the evening and while she looking for that for, while she looking for that tap in y'all can send taps in i want to thank everybody for joining in on pop being too but send those taps in to spade perry at gmail.com i want to hear all your tap in we will answer all those questions that you have you you can hear this new tap in right now that Kana got. yes so we had someone tap in and explain that she had listened to one of our shows, and she just went for it with her boyfriend and said, hey, what is your deepest fantasy? And he told her a story about how he ran a train with his homeboys on a chick. Mm -hmm. And she was like, now, like, I'm thinking about it when I'm at work. I'm thinking about it when I'm masturbating. Like, so I said, like, in what capacity are you thinking about it? And she said that she wants to be the girl that the guys run a train on mm. and ask me, should she expose that to her boyfriend? Mm. <clears throat> well, I can answer this real quick. <laughs> okay. 
the key word that you that you said was boyfriend. And this is this is I, I just finished talking about this about women making decisions that could be stupid. Um, <laughs> you're not married, man. You know what I'm saying. And even if you was married, it's not even a guarantee that you would keep your man. Now I'm not saying that every man is the same. There are certain men that like to see their wives pounded by another man. You know, and this is when you have to really find out. Like, is that a fantasy for him that he had in his past? Or is this a current thing that he actually thinks about? And then you will get your answer. That will be something that you really have to ask him. And then you could probably move on to other things. But I don't know too many men that like to see their woman pounded by their best friend or another man or any of that I shit. I think it backfired. It, I think when he told her, she imagined instead of, I don't know what she was thinking, but I, she imagined herself in that situation being the woman, which is really well, freaky. Well, you know what, 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 you know what I'm saying? What's crazy is like, you know, when we was talking about, when you was talking earlier about Polly, mm-hmm. which that's why I'm saying, I'm glad that you said that we'll probably have to revisit it. There are some women that could probably rebuttal you and say that could work for a a man having three wives. But what about me if I want two men and it's just her? You get what I'm saying? That could come up is is a subject. So Mm -hmm. that's why I said now you're going to have to discuss that with your man to figure out if that's okay that he would be socially acceptable with. Mm -hmm. Most men, like I said, I don't think that, you know, me and that's not happening with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, my lady ain't getting pounded by another guy. You know what I'm saying? But tomato, tomato. Yeah, I think this is what happens when you open Pandora's box. Um, And that's what she did. I understand why she did it. She wanted to have an honest conversation about her spouse's fantasy. And she is now thinking about being a part of that. But I think the most profound thing you said is this a fantasy of the past. Mm -hmm. And also, again, you are not your person's everything. This is something that he may have had in mind without you. And so that might be a fantasy for him and something that he covets and mm-hmm. keeps and wants to keep that mm-hmm. from himself and not share that with you. And so. you can sit on that sideline and film him running the train on someone else. <laughs> that could work too. Yep, it sure could. And we're here every single Friday. This is another episode of Relations, guys. My name is Kayla Lassiter. You can find me on IG, Twitter, and Facebook at Kayla Lassiter. I want to thank everybody for joining on Podbean. Please follow. Check us out every Friday. We got a YouTube channel at 8 p.m. Join the debate. Join the discussion. Subscribe to the channel. And you can find me on both platforms. That's Twitter and IG. If you're looking for the shirts, alphamalegodcreations.com. And like I always say about this time.